Hey everyone on YouTube, how's it going? I've actually been wanting to do this one for quite some time. So we bought this bandsaw. Pretty much one of the biggest complaints that I had about it was the fact that there was no water cooling setup for it. Uh, it was kind of one of my minor regrets with it. So what I did was end up picking up some materials, some from Home Depot, some from Harbor Freight, some generic hose I had laying around, and I decided to make this a water cooling setup. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, what I've done is I've taken a bucket to use as the main sump with the pump inside. Uh, it is a submersible pump, so it is watertight in terms of the electronics. Uh, and I've just cut down a bit to length here, and I'm just trying to line up everything and make sure that we're able to get the water through, have everything kind of in the right spot, be the right size. So I'm drilling this out to fit right on this fitting, and since it's plastic, nylon on plastic, it's gonna cut its own threads. Uh, and try and get everything to be pretty much in the just about right spot and then add in the fittings that we need to convert that to a regular barbed fitting. So we run over to the box of hose and large wire, which is very difficult sometimes to separate the hoses versus the large wire. Uh, and I'm finding some different quarter inch stuff and some 3 8 stuff that we can use. Forcing it to fit by uh, reaming it out with a drill. Uh, we're able to get this uh, fitting on. So now I'm drilling the return fitting. You want to make sure this is gravity fed. I got some line lock adjustable quarter inch hose. Uh, this was like seven or eight dollars on Amazon. Comes with two different fittings. It uh, looks like one is going to be a quarter inch NPT and one's going to be eighth inch NPT. I don't know which one we're going to use yet, uh, but obviously it comes with enough to do you know, obviously two different ones. You've got three different nozzles here. You've got a super fine pinhole nozzle there. You've got your kind of medium, most likely what we're gonna use nozzle, this little cone here. And you got this kind of monstrous one there. Uh, so, like I said, we're gonna just snap some of this together, see what length we need. All right, so like I said, I, I don't know which end I'm gonna use, which threaded bit, so I'm not gonna snap that together because they're a little bit of a pain to work with, um, unless you have the pliers, which of course, I didn't buy because I only need one of these, um, but they, you know, they hold in whatever position that you want. So if I was able to, let's say, get, oh, I need it like in this exact formation, right? It's like, okay, cool. You can do that and it's going to hold its shape. Um, obviously, Adam Savage uses this to hold up lamps. I think he uses a bigger one though, uh, but same thing, LED panels are using it as a hose. So let's snap this thing together. There we go. Bit of a pain, but um, using my T-shirt really held it uh, held it together. So do that. I'll snap the other side on once I figure out what fitting I'm going to use, and I can get this set up on the bandsaw. All right, we drilled this out to essentially fit just smaller than this size, and because of that, the plastic is malleable enough that we can essentially cut in our own threads. Go, and that's basically sealed enough. It's low pressure. Uh, the fill line is probably going to be somewhere around this baby drowning in a bucket, I guess. I don't know what that is. Um, but whatever this kid's doing, it's probably where the water line's going to be. Um, so it's just going to drain down on the other side of there. So not a big deal. We've got some clear, it's a 3 8 inch ID, half inch OD. And this is essentially going to run. It's going to fit right in there. Other side's going to fit right here. And uh, we need to seal up the edge of that hole so we don't get any leaks, but that'll essentially gravity drain into there. We also picked up a couple of different bungee cords. Uh, I think they're like three or four dollars a piece. So again, not super expensive. This one is adjustable. Um, I got the one that was exactly the right size, which means it's probably gonna be too big and it's not gonna have any tension on it. It didn't sit flat, so now it's not the perfect size. Oh no. So it is a little loose, so when it does get filled with water, it's also kind of sticky, so it doesn't rotate very well. <laughs> yeah, so when it does fill with water, it's gonna pull a little bit on that, get a little sag going. So this one was a 41 inch, which was like the perfect size. We can probably lower it down a little bit, get more angle on it, and that'll take up some of that slack. Staring at the back of my head there, sorry about that.
Uh, the main thing you want to make sure is that you don't have it like drooping down a lot because then whatever it does drain is going to get caught in here. If you have particles in there, it's going to end up potentially clogging that because you only have gravity draining here. There's no pressure in the system. There's no vacuum on the other side of the system. So you'll want to make sure that it is whatever you do, smooth and gradual. Maybe that means putting a 90 right there so that it's nice and smooth um, or just a straight fitting. We can work with pretty much either because we've got kind of an open concept here. Part of the reason that we lifted this here, obviously, um, you can see that we could have screwed it in, we could have done something much lower. Why do we spend time milling and drilling out a cap? And the reason that is, is because most of the steel, most of the aluminum is going to sink to the bottom of the, of the pan here. So by having it about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch lifted, we should be able to catch uh, or eliminate anything that's heavier than the water from flowing into this uh, drain here. So that's going to keep our tank much cleaner. Anything that floats in here should be floating on the top of the water level in here, which should keep it from getting sucked into our pump as well. So essentially we have almost a little filtration system uh, built in here. And then of course the pump itself also has a filter. Um, I prefer not to have to clean that. So it'd be great to not have anything get caught in there, but it's good to have it as a backup. All right, so hopefully when you're in the machine shop, you don't have to use the bathroom because that is that is intense. A little bit too much. So you've got quite a bit of pressure. I can probably put a clamp on this line. All right, so we've got some, some channel locks here. All right, so you can see how aggressive that is. If I just clamp off this line just a tiny little bit, right? Just give it a little, boom. That's what we're looking for, right? So one thing that we actually can do, instead of putting in a restrictor per se, like a permanent restrictor, we can actually add in, and we can do this on any part of the system, but the more convenient would be up here at the top, right? Um, but we can add in some sort of a, like a ball valve or a butterfly valve of some kind, something that's probably easier to turn than this one. Our bungee cord is actually tight. It's not so tight that it's like bending the handle, but it is tight enough that this bucket's not falling or not going anywhere, which is nice. And we can also take a look over at what our drainage is doing, right? So, you know, we can look over here and see how fast is it draining. And we can see the amount of air in the line, meaning that this is probably not the restriction, um, you know, considering how it's actually draining. Right, up until that very end is pretty clean cut you know you can you can still feel it obviously with your fingernail but 
Not bad. It's the other side, which we did with uh, oil. Overall, not bad though. So what we're doing with this brush, um, I was noticing that the blade was actually carrying over a lot more water than I thought towards the back. So there's a bit of a puddle back here. A couple tablespoons, you know, quarter cup at most. But I can get a brass one of these, mount it in here um, to try and scrape off most of the water and the, and the particles so they don't end up, you know, going through the whole system. All right, so before, where this thing was super easy to collapse, right? Now it's not. Now I can, let's say I drop something off the saw, boom, right? So now I don't have to dig around in the water to get my stuff out. Go to bend this over. The hose doesn't get tangled in the saw path or in the saw motion. And this just keeps it pretty much out of the way of whenever you're gonna have anything here. So you can have anything connected, um, but you do have the belts that you need to access in case you want to adjust your speed so you're not obstructing that um, and you still are able to change the blade here as well so if we lift that back up you can see that we're not obstructing the blade the path here so it's good to kind of go through those tests of what's your maintenance cycle going to be like what are you going to end up doing when you're trying to move this thing around so again that's why we're using that bottom tray to hold this um, essentially your your first stage tank or your catch pretty simple uh, easy weekend or afternoon project depending on uh, when you do it. I obviously started this project in the middle of the night so when I needed to go grab a couple more fittings, uh, Lowe's is closed, coronavirus has everything that's 24 hours is closed so there wasn't an ability for me to go get hose from a 24 hour auto zone or Walmart or anything like that so I was pretty much stuck with whatever I had in the garage which is why some of these hoses turned out um, kind of weird. Overall, pretty easy one day build, assuming that you start it in the morning and that you don't have to run out and get parts in the middle of it. It'll pretty much fit with, with most bandsaws because again, you're, you're doing something kind of universal here. Uh, but obviously with the Harbor Freight one, it's nice because you're able to place the, the bucket, which is the heaviest kind of part. It's gonna be over the axle. And, and the other th cool thing too is I didn't wanna have to drag the bucket around separately and then drag the everything else and move the saw and then move the bucket and then disconnect the hose and reconnect the hose. I want it to be sort of one apparatus that I can just pick up, move over um, and set up. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Um, you know, I'll post the the price list. You know, like the bucket's only a couple bucks, Harbor Freight pump, couple bucks. I think it was like 10 or 15, it was super cheap. Um, you know, this tray, maybe five or six dollars, but if you have one laying around, probably free. Uh, you know, you've got obviously some hoses, the fittings, they're gonna change depending on what size hose you use. Um, you know, I, I just used something that was easy to work with the pump. So that's why I have some of this clear vinyl hose. Um, Normally I would use heater hose just because it's something that I have um, normally available. Uh, but with the project car, with the Mini Cooper and the engine swap and everything else, um, I've been using a lot of that stuff for this. So I ran low on my hose and uh, had to run out and buy some. Thanks for watching, subscribing, liking, and commenting on my videos. That's a great way to help support the channel. If you want to crank your support up a notch, consider becoming a patron over on Patreon. You get early access to videos, and you get to have your name immortalized here in the video. Alright, thanks for watching the video everybody. Make sure to stay safe and be healthy, and of course, keep modding your cars.